to stir or not to stir? That is the question that I'm trying to answer today. I'm talking about my hot liquor ton that you can see up behind me here. And I'm trying to work out whether or not it's going to help out if I give it a stir. Because lately I've been having troubles with my mash temperatures where I'd set a value on my, my temperature controller. I'd get massive overshoots and undershoots and it just didn't seem to be very stable. I was like dealing with differentials of a few degrees. And uh, I figured, well, if I put in a stirrer in the hot liquor ton, that's going to stir up the liquid and uh, make sure that it's all homogenous and I've got a good flow going over my Herms coil and uh, the, the temperature probe is going to get a much faster response from the heater because all that liquid is being circulated around for it. It's not just relying on a bit of convection when the heater's running. And uh, I looked this up on the forums and there's a lot of information there saying, don't do it, you don't need to, you've already got convection happening from the heater and it shouldn't be an issue. And so here I am thinking, uh, I, I think it's going to help me, but on the other hand, a lot of advice is saying it's just pointless and I shouldn't bother. And I don't want to add anything unnecessary to my brewery anyway that can just break down or cause more complications and more cleaning. So I'm going to do some tests today and see if it's really going to help. Okay, so here is my hot liquor ton. As you can see, I've got a Herms coil inlet that goes in here, comes back out here. I've got a temperature readout here. And of course my sparge water and uh, mashing water all comes in from here, this tap. And uh, I've got a temperature probe going in the side. So let's open it up. And here you can see the Herms coil. And uh, down here this is the temperature probe. And that's the main heater element running along the bottom there. And that's the water outlet there. I usually have a pickup tube, it's not in at the moment. I'm just going to fill it up with water to make sure that the heating element and the temperature probe are immersed properly for the rest of this test. Okay, that should do it. Now you can see the Herms coil is completely submerged, the temperature probe is underwater, and uh, yeah, it's ready to go. So I'm going to turn it on now. I'll set my mash temperature up to 66. I think it's already on 66. Yeah, it is. Good. Okay, and that's going to take a while, but eventually it will reach our mash temperature. <laughs> Okay, so now you can see I've just reached my mash temperature. Uh, it's turned off at 66 degrees and the temperature now continues to rise. And we can see that temperature is just overshooting now and we'll see how high that goes. Okay, so we've reached 1.4 degrees above my set point and if you consider that it's going to have to drop to 0.3 degrees below my set point before that heater turns back on, you can see there's quite a big difference there, uh, a big fluctuation there in the mash temperature. It's not going to ruin a brew, but it, it is, you know, almost two degrees there of inaccuracy that I'd like to be able to control. Okay, so with my mash ton now at its target temperature, I'm just going to see what kind of temperature differences we can get in here. So I've got my trusty old alcohol thermometer with me and uh, I'll just get that in focus. And uh, we're now at 67.1 degrees according to the STC. So I'll put this probe right near the end of the temperature probe that the STC is looking at. And we should see it come up relatively close to that. I'll just focus again, there we go. So we're coming up to 65, whoops. So we're at about 66.5 degrees. If we look back down there, yeah, 66.3, that's not bad. There we go, sorry for the noise. Let's see what the temperature's like down near where my sparge water comes out on the bottom. And here we can see, oh, we're dropping right down. Uh, I'll see if I can zoom in on that. It's a bit hard with one hand. Yeah, so we're down near oh, 44, 43 degrees, 42 degrees. 
And that's like right down near where my sparge water is coming out. So there you have it. That's that's pretty significant. Where I think that I'm uh, mashing, you know, with around 66 degrees. But if I go to do my batch sparging or um, uh, fly sparging, it's just going to be completely inaccurate unless I have some kind of agitation going on here. I think. Wow. So there you have it. Uh, that was quite interesting seeing nearly a 20 degrees celsius temperature differential in the hot liquor ton between the temperature probe that the stc is using and down at the bottom where the cool water is kind of just stagnating down there and uh that's the water that's going to go straight out through into my sparge water so uh i'm pretty sure that makes a really good case for me to build a hot liquor ton stirrer and get all the water agitated in there and moving around and that's also going to have the added benefit of um, sort of like increasing the surface area of my Herms coil as well. So maybe I'll be able to do those temperature steps a little bit faster as well, which will be a benefit on my brew day. Uh, so I guess next up I'll have to do another video when I build my hot liquor tongue stirrer. <laughs> <laughs>